Hi again. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're talking about the environment, heat, how it can impact your plants, how it's impact our grows, and what we've done to correct these kind of issues. As you know, we moved into the new house, built a new studio, and we've been in the new studio for probably about six months now. We did put in a ton of work setting up this room to be the new grow room studio. Demo day! Where we can work, film, grow, and do everything and have a place to do this. You guys know, if you were here before, it was one of our main goals of getting the new house and getting everything set up. So the new studio was exciting because we were able to get all of our grows together and be able to create our content all in one space. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who've been around here before we moved, since the channel started, supporting our content and making this all possible. It truly is a dream come true and it's been amazing. So we're really excited to get back to it and start to be able to focus more on the grows making content, having fun with you guys, and being a part of the community. We put a ton of work into the new studio, making it look cool as a cool space to grow and film, and getting everything set up. Everything turned out amazing. We absolutely love it. And getting into the grows, this very first year that we've been here, is we started to notice some issues when summer started to come around. So starting our grows in the new studio, things went pretty good for a little bit. Then summer hit. This thing can't cure and fast boy, enough. Boy, is it hot in here. It is crazy hot in here. I got sweat dripping down my legs right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one thing we really weren't prepared for with the new studio because the new house didn't have any kind of forced air system or central air. That means the room here got really, really hot with four grow tents going and lights going, plus computers and stuff like that, and no airflow circulation within the room things started to get really hot. It got so hot and uncomfortable in here and our grows definitely started showing it. With the higher temps came higher humidities, more struggles controlling that in the tents and the room, and the room itself was just really uncomfortable. We've got some really great data from the pulse that we had in here in the lung room. You can see the temperatures over summer just getting extremely hot in the room, 85 plus, and then in the tents, even higher, sometimes over 90 degrees with high humidity too, because there was nothing in here cooling the room down, helping control the environment. It led to other issues like pests, high temperature, high humidity, makes it prime for pests. What's going on here? Strips. No, I'm just kidding. Oh no, it is it is something. You see that moving? No. Right there. See that wiggling around? What is that? It looks to me very much like um, when I got thrips before. It looks like little spots. It looks like little spit spots. That's the signs of thrips. And in hindsight, we were doing things like opening the windows in the room just to try and bring the temperature down, using fans to pull air in from outside, especially in the evening when it was cooler, just trying to bring the temps down in the room. But that was also just adding to the pest problem. We had issues controlling the pests, and keeping the plants clean and happy. So basically, our brand new, beautiful studio became a hell room. <laughs> it was really hot and uncomfortable just to work in here. Just, uh, just getting sweaty, getting hot really easily. Um, and it just was not enjoyable. So what we decided to do after seeing the temps and the data from Pulse, we knew we had to do something to change the environment in the room here and help the grows to make sure that they can have a stable environment so the plants can really grow to the best of their ability. And to top it off, because the temperature was so high in the grow room affecting the grow tents, that also affected something I wasn't even thinking about until I started looking closely at the data from our Pulse Hub. I could see the reservoir temperature in the tank for the feeding of Floriflex to the plants was hitting over 80 degrees. Because the ambient temperature in the room was higher than 80, that water reservoir started to get over 80 degrees. The recommended feeding temperature for nutrients in Floriflex is between 65 to 75 degrees. So when we're feeding water over 80, this is having an impact on how the plants can grow, uptake nutrients, and especially with autos, which can be finicky, can cause stunting and growth issues. 
And with the Pulse Hub, I was using the VWC monitor to monitor inside the pot, the EC, moisture content, and temperature. And I noticed the temperature of the pots was hitting well over 80 degrees. So that root zone temperature is way too hot for cannabis, which likes anywhere between 68 to 75 degrees in the root zone. Ours was getting way higher than that, leading to even more issues with the plants, even more fox tailing, and poor performance and growth. And because we dry our cannabis in the same room, this was also affecting our dry and cure of finished plants in the room because it was so hot, the temperature and humidity inside the drying area was also much higher, leading to evaporating terpenes and terpene degradation and just poor drying performance of plants. You don't really wanna cure in an area that hot. Your ideal cure should be between 60 and 70 degrees and 45 to 55% relative humidity. The issues we were having with our plants was something that we had never experienced before. With the heat and humidity came issues with the plants like foxtailing. Our last runs that we started in midsummer during the peak of the heat and humidity, all of those plants basically did not really turn out well just because of high heat, high temperatures. We started to see foxtailing, plus trying to deal with the pests in that environment where they were thriving. It really just made for a struggle with those plants. So we've decided to basically scrap those plants out um, and we're not gonna do seed to harvest on them, but we did get some usable stuff from those. We used the pulse and really tried to dial in our environment as best we could while dealing with the heat. And that's really great with the PPFD and PAR readings. We can try and take measurements, make sure our light's putting out, but we did have to lower our light output levels just to try and bring the heat down in the tents. The new AC Infinity Ion Frame Evo 8 definitely is a big, great light, but when the environment's already hot and your tent's already hot, having it cranked up would just add to that heat and make everything even worse. So we were trying to use the pulse in combination with lowering our light levels to try and bring the heat down. But even with all that, it was still getting hot, peaking up sometimes over 90 degrees in the tent. And you could definitely tell the plants were struggling. So because we don't have forced air in the house and no easy way to add a complete forced air system because the house is just not really set up for that kind of a system. So what we decided to do was get a dual zone mini split so we could put another air handler in the room so just this room could be cooled and controlled. And mini splits, if you guys are not familiar, are a great, super efficient way to cool a room. They can also provide heat in the winter time and they can dehumidify. So it's kind of an all-in-one unit that cools, heats, and dehumidifies all year long. Yeah, so it was a no-brainer that that's what we needed in our studio. We went with a Mr. Cool DIY 36K multi-zone mini split system. This unit allows up to four air handlers to be installed inside for cooling. We placed a larger air handler upstairs in the living room to cool the main floor, and the smaller unit in the grow room to keep the plants under control and help control the temperatures in the summertime. The installation was easy. I did everything myself except run power to the unit, which I hired an electrician for so he could get the power in the right location so I can wire up the condenser. Mounting the air handlers inside was very easy. I did have to drill a three inch hole through the side of the house to run the refrigerant lines out to the condenser unit. Since the refrigerant lines are pre-charged, you just connect one side to the air handler and the other side to the condenser makes it really easy and didn't take long once I had everything in place. Once you connect the refrigerant line, spray them with water to make sure there's no leaks or bubbles. And then all you have to do is wire in the air handlers, which is very easy because everything is numbered. So you just wire them up to their corresponding numbers. After that, it was just cleaning up the line sets and control wires for the air handlers. I got some line set covers off Amazon that look great and really clean up the outside. You can see just last week before we got this hooked up or actually Sunday in the drying tent, 81 degrees and 75% humidity. That's not good. No, it's not. I was really worried that these were gonna have bud rot in them and they did not. This is pretty much exactly it. where I turn it on. So it's like 78 and 60% and all it just goes down in a couple hours to 71. It's just and insane. 51%. Just the heat and everything was affecting so much more than just I guess the grows, even our drying, you know, curing. It was affecting a lot, but if we go back to the auto tent, which probably was getting the- The worst the of high, it. Yeah, the, the, the worst of it. Like you can see back here, we're getting up into the 85s. Definitely some days where it was getting in the, into the 90s. This is before the mini split, and then right here is where we added the mini split. And everything starts to get just a little bit more stable. You can also see the humidity is starting to get under control. Thanks, 
So you can see just by adding that mini split, boom, our temperatures are now starting to maintain. So now that we have the mini split in and set and our environment is a little bit more ideal. It's so cool in here. I'm wearing a little jacket right now. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little bit more ideal to grow plants in. So we have decided to reset all of our grows and start fresh. We cleaned out all the tents, vacuumed, cleaned all the equipment, and we're resetting all the tents to start over fresh with a new environment that's now controlled where we can maintain temperatures, help control the humidity, and make sure the environments inside the tents are on point. So with all the plants that we removed, some of them had foxtail bugs like Strawberry Gorilla from Fast Buds really did not handle the heat well. And this is a prime example of what foxtailing looks like. Your bud structure is usually larfy and stacked on top of each other. And just an overall larfy appearance. It doesn't really dry well. It's more difficult to trim. So for this one, we just ran it all through the bowl trimmer wet, immediately froze it. And we'll run this through later through the extract craft because this will extract great, but it's not really great for smoking or trimming once it's dried. It did have great trichome production. It was very sticky. The terp smelled great, so we didn't want to let it go to waste. For that particular plant, we just froze it all immediately. We're going to extract that with Extract Craft. The Indigo Rockstar from Wildwood, that turned out pretty good. Did have some issues, but overall, that's one we saved and put into the drying tent. Diamond Hands turned out pretty great. But despite the temps, Diamond Hands by Square One Genetics turned out great. It is a photo, so a little bit more resilient. It's also in the tent with the Evo 6, so it got a little less hot in there versus the one with the Evo 8 where our autos were. So despite everything, it wasn't a total loss. We still had some plants turn out, but the heat and humidity definitely made a huge impact on our grows this year. Just starting out, I kind of suspected we might have some issues with the heat, but I didn't expect it to be that bad. Getting the mini split in is a big relief for the grows because it's really gonna help us maintain the environment and get the tents back under control. Thank you guys so much for watching. This first year has been a wild one in the new house. We feel like we're finally starting to get the grows really dialed in now that we can control the room with the mini split. So we're super pumped to get back to growing. But we appreciate you fam for watching, showing support and love. It's been a busy year, so content's been a little slow. And with setbacks like this in the grow, it's made it harder to keep up on videos and content. So we want to drop this video to let you guys know where the grows are at, what's been going on this first year, and what's coming up. If you want to be a part of our grow, you can join our Patreon and vote on what happens in our tents. And we do weekly lives with all of our patrons. And not only that, you get a whole lot of the behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely join now, guys. We are starting to grow along soon with the new Neil to Heaven strain from Platinum Seeds. We'll hook you guys up with some. You can grow along with us, other Patreon fam. And it's going to be a dope one for a really cool seed to harvest. We think we're going to try Scroggin for the first time. And it's a photo. You can check out our Instagram for all the behind the scenes and Weed Fact Wednesdays, where we post facts about cannabis on Wednesday. If you want to see how this mini split helped our environment and our grow, be sure to hit that subscribe and that bell. We're just going to be chilling in here until we see you guys in the next one.